Uh, hey, what's up, YouTube? Uh, TR Bailey 823 here uh, with my friend Cliff uh, here. I'm, the best. I'm doing pretty good. Just top four YCS Columbus. Hell yeah. Top four YCS Columbus. Got himself an Xbox One. Almost, I'm, uh, almost. Yeah, accident. I missed the Minerva twice. Do he? he is, what's that? <laughs> I missed the Minerva twice. Twice? I uh -huh. lost in top four, and then I lost for the third and fourth. Oh man, that's brutal. Yeah, I know. I think it'd be worse to like lose in top six of. Oh yeah, definitely. But I won't. I won't be able to figure that out for four years. Hopefully, <laughs> I figure that out. But <laughs> who knows? But, uh, alright, man, so, looks like you played... I played the Pendulum deck. Paid a Pendulum deck. Pendulum decks are pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, alright, man, let's get into your list, so... You... I remember when we played at the States together, mm -hmm. you played this deck a little differently. Like, you had less traps. I don't think you played very many hand traps, or you maybe played Maxi. No, I didn't play. I didn't main any of the hand traps. I was playing the Reflesia build at ARG States. I had top like three regionals before the states, but that's when before everyone was playing the Cosmo Demise deck. But everybody still wanted to go first, so like everybody was playing like pure BA. So I was just capitalizing on letting everyone go first, and I was just going second and killing my opponent. It's always good. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, you played the three effect Baylor. How did that work out for you this weekend? Uh, it, it definitely the MVP of the day, besides Magical Abductor. We'll get into that later. Um, I opted not to main Maxi because it's not a combo card, so it really sucks going first. But uh, Baylor, it, I mean, it also sucks going first, but you can search it off Magical Abductor, so right. it's not always dead, and you can always have it. It's like another trap card. That's very true. Um, what I always thought was interesting about effect Baylor is this format is one of those formats where you're like, all the matchups are so, like, Either Valor is extremely good or yeah. extremely bad, mm -hmm. which I find that to be pretty interesting. How did you how did you overcome like having that card against like decks like Cosmo or um, you know the Magispector version of your deck, the ones that play all the Magispector? Did you play any of those? Uh, I played Corey Roca in the third and fourth place play, uh, playoff, and uh, he raped me game one because I drew double effect Valor, and it's really bad against his deck. Yeah. And then so I just sided that out for the rest of the day. But uh, I played five Cosmo throughout the entire day in top cut. Uh, I lost to three of them because of Effect Valor. Because like, just like I said, it's really good or really bad. They were all Demise Cosmo except for one. So I Valor, you have the Valor of the Tin Can, and then they're, after they set five, and then you win because all their back rows like call right, behind it. Yeah. Or uh, you don't have Effect Valor on their Tin Can, and then it's awful right after that. Yeah, I so guess most of them, they just came out for system downs. I noticed that a lot of that those Cosmo decks won at that event, which surprised me because I kind of thought that deck went by the wayside because I think right after Fraser topped with it, you know, most of the Yu-Gi-Oh community tested it and just kind of decided the deck sucked. So I was kind of mm -hmm. surprised a lot of people. <laughs> but yeah, it's easy Valor, to play. So Effect Valor seems really good against that build. Really, yeah. really good against that build. They don't have any cards in their hands. So. Mm -hmm. All right, man. So let's let's get into let's let's dive into the actual list instead of just talking about like Valor and whatever. <laughs> so I saw you played uh, you played two second donkey um, in the deck. How did you like that one? I know that a lot of people are have been playing it again. Is it just like to help? You just having a hard time getting scales, and this is like one of those cards that kind of could get you there. Get the card uh, for combo. yeah. It's like another card that's either really good or really bad. Because it's not a pendulum monster, so you can't just like soul charge for five whenever you're pendulum summoning and goes to your graveyard. You can't make it nicer with it. Right. But it's just like another Joker. Like it searches for the best card in the deck, which is pendulum sorcerer. So it helps get your injury going, and it's a level four. So most of the time, I like cider one out. But it was really good. I'm I'm glad I, I put, I'm glad I played it. It being a searchable searchable card too is kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I think one of the most interesting parts about pendulums in general is this deck has been completely savaged by the ban list on multiple occasions and i feel like you like i feel like it would just take so much to try to take this deck down a lot like burning abyss like how those two decks are really tough to actually just eliminate so i, I really think that this deck is going to be around for quite some time years mm -hmm. i mean because you know you the panel mechanic is so broken yeah you go past like, second donkey, there's other, like, performer pop monsters that are actually just really good that nobody plays because they're not needed. And so mm -hmm. I, I think it's crazy. But, all right, you played the full 
the full vector, or I'm sorry, the Draco engine with the Draco face off. Yeah, that's pretty uh, standard. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got the Masters, the Lecter, Vector, and Luster. Um, obviously, I don't think there's much to say about those. That's probably the reason why you play this deck. Those cards are... Yep, yep, <laughs> they're, they're unfair. You can't win no, You can't win any games playing fair cards. So Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the two Archfiend Centric. Uh, yeah, I actually didn't like that card a lot. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask, because I know... Am I going to cut it, or it's going to go to one? <laughs> right. So, I noticed that a lot of people were either really liking this card or really disliking it. But, man, sometimes you're just like, this card's just too good. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's really good because it's a scale 7, and I saw the uh, Kieran, so it's good to pendulum it back. But it's a level 3, so sometimes it's hard to pendulum back. That's true. So it's just it's really awkward sometimes. I don't like it a lot. The, uh, you have to have the, the, the monkey board yeah. really, to get it to come back, which is one of the problems with it. And then Magical Abductor, that card arguably might just be the best card in the entire Yep, definitely. Best card in the deck. My favorite card in the deck. I mean, it's kind of crazy that this that this deck was so ridiculously powerful that people opted to play zero copies of that card. This yeah. That, this deck is just so hard to... It, it's going to be a tough one for Konami to answer down the road, I think. Yeah, people played Abductor in, like, the earlier versions when people were playing, like, Brilliant Fusion and you didn't have, like, Monkey Board and stuff. You just had Luster and Plush Fire. A couple people were playing it then, and then it phased out because you had, like, Triple Monkey Board, Triple Joker. You just didn't need it. And then now that you have it with Terraforming and Sky Iris doesn't suck anymore, this card is just insane. Sky Iris might be the best field spell ever. Yes, it is. It is ignorant. It is so good. Then you have, you have two Lizard Draw, Monkey Board... One Get Turtle, which is actually kind of a small. I mean, you have the you have the one of in the standards for the rest of the Performer Pal Engine, except for the three uh, Sorcerer, which obviously you're gonna play as many copies of that as phenomenal yeah. as you can play. <laughs> but I mean, that that's kind of considered a s somewhat low number of Performer Pals. Did you ever miss not having like a second Get Turtle or maybe oh, a Lizard Draw? Yeah. Yeah, um, I really wanted the second Get Turtle like a lot of the times because like the Pot of Greed crate play is absolutely amazing. But um, they suck to draw on their own. Like it's really only good with Monkey Board. Um, the high scale for the Unicorn is really good because you can pin on back Kieran and stuff, which I cited. And then a Silver Claw was actually my like tech card, I guess. It's really good because you can add it off Monkey Board, and then whenever you pin on some Sorcerer and you're popping the Monkey Board in Silver Claw, you can actually pin on back the Silver Claw. It's not useless like. One of the auto scales right. or a guitar turtle lizard draw. Right, it's actually like a, it's actually like a real card in terms of it being a level four and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then this card might be the most scary card that opponents might have to face in your deck, the auto fusion. Um, oh my god, yes, it's searchable. That's why it's broken. <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, I couldn't imagine. I mean, I guess, I guess you could flip hedgehog, but I mean, how, could you imagine searching for Shadal fusion with like something <laughs> for free like that? I mean, it's craziness. That card is just so powerful, and it's kind of unparalleled in what it does. I mean, it summons a monster that's just straight up a monstrosity. It kind of has a one-on-one -on -one <laughs> effect on top of being a 3,000 defense monster. And then it can negate anything. can negate anything, you know, and for a cost that you probably like, yeah, I don't mind putting Monkey Board back in my deck, you know. I yeah. That card, <laughs> you know? So, you know, that's kind of unparalleled in a sense. I mean, you play – there was a lot of Burning Abyss in Top Cut this this event, which was surprising because that deck had been not be seeing a lot of play, but this card is fantastic against that deck because they a lot of times can, especially the pe the PK Fire build, which is the one that ended up winning the event. They summon yeah. Dante's quite often on the first turn, so you probably landed that on a, quite a few of those decks this weekend, I would imagine, right? <laughs> I actually only played one Burning Abyss deck, and it was PK really? Fire. I played it round three. Really, you played it early, huh? <laughs> yeah. The guy was really good, but uh, I, he turn one, he makes double Dante, and he set a fog blade, but he wasn't able to make Beatrice, and I, I opened the Odd Fusion. So uh, I activated an Eccentric, popped the back row, which was a fog blade. That was one time Eccentric was good. And then uh, I just kind of slammed the Odd Fusion, and he stared at the Vortex for the rest of the game. <laughs> That's really tough to, for, <laughs> That's really tough to deal with. That card's just so good. What yeah. I find so interesting about this matchup with Burning Abyss, because obviously you guys all know I, I play Burning Abyss like it's my religion or something. <laughs> you know, a lot of decks, you can make Dante, and you're okay. You know, Dante's still good. People forget Dante's really good. But this deck, if you make Dante, you probably just lose. This deck just does so much stuff. Like, it's kind of, un, 
it's kind of on another level in a lot of decks in terms of its power and what it's able to do. So obviously you played Upstart, Terraforming, those cards are to help Magical Abductor, um, which is kind of funny because you play Magical Abductor, but you don't play a boatload of spells other than, obviously, I mean, I know that the Pendulum Monsters are all spells themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, did you ever have problems, like, resolving uh, the three search for Magical Abductor when you drew it in the opening hand, or, did, or is it pretty easy still, even with the lower number of spells? Uh, sometimes it's hard to, like, to use the search effects while it's in the Pendulum scale, because, like, I didn't play a lot of spells. Right. But you can play Abductor, and then you can play Master and, like, pop itself, and that already gets it a counter. So, like, that happened a couple times, but it's really good while it's on the field, because after you, like, pin it back with a Sorcerer, and you blow up two scales, then you can Guitar Toward a Lizard Draw, and then you get to draw two cards, and then it also gives it two counters for its effect, so then you only have to have one more scale to search the Effect Veiler. I mainly use it for the searching Effect Veiler, rather than adding a pin Monster. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's, that's actually a really interesting perspective to look at it. Effect Veiler is always a controversial card in any format just because like it's either mm-hmm. really good or really bad, it's only good against this. But if you can get it for free, it's always good. Yeah. <laughs> free Veilers are good Veilers for sure. So you, then obviously since you played Ariadne, you played the, the three copies of Solemn Strike, the Solemn Warning. Um, did you regret not maining Chaos Trapple at this event, or do you think that this trap lineup was the one that you... Uh, I do kind of regret not playing Chaos Trapple. Because of my matchups, I played a lot of Monarch and a lot of Cosmo, but right. obviously I didn't know I was going to play that going into the event. So sure. the Solemn Brigade, just for, that, I mean, that's like just fine for any it's event. It's good against most decks. I'd say, yeah, it's generic. I'd say Strike is probably better against Cosmo anyways. Yeah. But, I mean, unless you're playing all those, uh, apparently you played all the build, all of the uh, the funny build, the one that's just like I'll set five and summon one monster. Because that yeah. seems like anything <laughs> against that deck is pretty good, though. Um, alright, so let's go into your extra deck. Uh, you played the, uh, obviously the two Dynaster, the Vortex for your fusions. I mean, you played two Synchro Monsters, one of them I'm assuming you can't make, which is the Odd-Eyes Meteor Burst. That's just to send with Odd-Eyes Fusion, right? Yeah, you can probably make it in, an, in like, some absurd way with, like, Valor, Donkey, and Eccentric or something like that, but, yeah, yeah it's just for the Odd-Eyes Fusion. Right, and then you play, uh, <laughs> have you ever made that card? <laughs> I have, in fact, made it. I made it with, uh, um, when I was playing Angel Trumpeteer, I made it with Angel Trumpeteer and uh, Arch Phoenix Centric, and then uh, attacked over Majesty's Fiends, and then Pendulum Summons, and then made a huge board. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, then we got, obviously, Ignister. That's definitely the best extra deck card. If that card didn't exist, obviously, you wouldn't be playing this deck. <laughs> yep. So you got the Dweller, Castell, and Direwolf. And the Magister uh, the Paladin. Those are all pretty self-explanatory. I think if anyone needs explanations for that, this is probably not the deck profile for them. <laughs> or something different, maybe Monarchs. But um, <laughs> maybe Monarchs. Maybe Monarchs. <laughs> <laughs> but you got the Emerald in there, and I know that a lot of people aren't playing Emerald. Um, what made you decide to play Emerald? Um, well, a bunch of people don't like making Ignister on their turn one. Just because, like, I mean, it's at one. But I, I just kind of focus my deck around making, like, the Titanic Hope Galaxy thing. And then right. setting, like, a Counter Trap or two. And then searching Effect Veiler. So, like, making an Unbreakable Board is really good. So I, I threw the Emerald in there just so I can recycle the Ignister. Because Ignister is, like, you don't really use it to kill your opponent anymore. Obviously you can. But it's really good to, like, extend your plays. Yeah, That's the best part about the card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't see any Perform Mage... Um... Whatever that one bitch is, the 2500 card, and that's not... Oh, the trapeze thing? Yeah. yeah no trapeze <laughs> magician, so we're not trying to kill our opponents. Well, I mean, obviously that's the goal, but maybe not yeah. one turn anymore. But did the Emerald come up any times this weekend? Uh, Yeah, I used it twice. One time to shuffle back an Igniter, and then a, a second time, because I didn't have um, a second Magister, I made the Emerald instead, and then detached and brought back the Master and killed him for game. That's pretty good. <laughs> there you go. Hey... Yeah, Gear Gigan or uh, Gear Gigan Emerald right there. Yeah. <laughs> Wind up carrier Digusto Emerald for the Nellis. There we go. All right, and then you got the three Utopia cards. The only thing I dislike about those cards is that they just take up so much extra deck space. But then, how can you like turn down something as powerful as Lightning? That card's just so good. Yeah, a bunch of people aren't playing the Prime card, but the two like the two able activations of Lightning is insane. Like I don't, it's I don't. Pressure. I, it puts yeah. pressure. I mean, like, um, Eddie and I are playing Breakthrough Skill in our Burning Abyss deck, so that helps answer Lightning. But if you mm-hmm. sit there with you Lightning over a Burning Abyss play, and then the very next turn, 
Your opponent has to take care of Lightning. The only thing that add up to 2,500 is making another Dante and slamming it in there and losing it, unless you have, like, a breakthrough skill or something. So, mm -hmm. to me, I find it kind of difficult to believe that people would pass on the Prime. Just yeah. considering that, you know, you'd think that Lightning would come up the most against Burning Abyss, obviously, as it plays against Cosmo. Um, but that matchup's kind of simple for you anyways, as it is. I mean, for the most part, wouldn't you agree? Cosmo's yeah. pretty but, yeah, I mean, Lightning is just so good. And then you obviously, like you said, you play the Hope Harbinger card is really good, especially against yeah. our deck, take their pantheism, tell them to fuck off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the Twin Twister, like, every single match. Yeah, Twin Twisters are not going through. <laughs> At all. <laughs> 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 but thanks for the spell counter for Abductor, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you got the other Odd Eyes, the rank. Eight guy, that guy's literally for Odd Eyes Fusion, I'm assuming. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Never made that one. Never made him. He's pretty mm -hmm. hard to make, isn't he? Yeah, I don't even know how to make it. I don't even know what the card does. I just don't even know card, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the side deck, you have Maxis. Obviously, that's for, like, the Fire King Cosmo, Burning Abyss deck, stuff like that. Yeah, I didn't want to main it because, like, Maxi is undoubtedly a good card. Like, let's get that out of the way. But most of the time, if you Maxi them, you're probably just going to die anyways. Like... Right. Most of the time, decks just push through the maxi and kill you, and you're like, oh, well, nothing I can do about it. <laughs> or, you know, it's not really all that powerful against... Uh, it's it's kind of hard to time against pendulums. It's not very good against monarchs in general. I mean, unless they open with a brilliant fusion, and they have to use the prime in their grave. But, like, yeah. for the most part, it's not that great against those decks. It kind of has its weaknesses. Then you sided the two Kirins. Um Why did you decide to side that over maining them? Uh, I just kind of went with Joey Lynch's idea. He said he didn't want to main it because it was too awkward against most matchups. But uh, it's really good against the mirror, and it's really good against Burning Abyss, especially if they don't see it game one. So they kind of like they don't expect it game two. Right. It's just a phenomenal card to put. If you can summon this with like an effect veiler or one trap behind it, you win the game. Really like yeah. Kieran is phenomenal. I played Joey actually at St. Louis. Joey's a phenomenal player. Yeah, he's pretty good. Oh, man. I, I timed out due to inactivity on Dueling Network. All right, hang on, guys. Don't worry. I'll get to the video. <laughs> but, yeah, he cited that in against me, and I thought that was kind of funny. I was like, did you just not main that, or did I just not see it game one? <laughs> uh, we cited that card. I was like, okay. <laughs> man, that's crazy. So I also saw Pendulum Storm. That is kind of a card that I notice a lot of times. I've looked at I, I was playing it for a bit. But then I realized it was just not the way it worked, so I stopped playing it. I thought I could <laughs> tunnel them scales and then blow up their back row. I thought I could just eat like, the juice with it, but that's not how it works. <laughs> so what made you decide to play that over a card like Mystical Space Typhoon? Um, so I played it over Mi Mystical Space Typhoon is because it basically is a Mystical Space Typhoon at its worst. But I also saw a Twin Twister. But uh, Pendulum Storm, my friend Chester Henson, he also top aided the YCS. Props to him. Uh, he convinced me to sell this card. And I'm so glad he did, because this was the MVP of my side deck. This card is absolutely phenomenal. Every single one of my opponents had to read the card. It was great. <laughs> so how did it work better than uh, Mystical Space Typhoon for you? Just getting to reset your scales is just really big. I'm uh, sure, but... Yeah, um, round 10, I played against Dan Cunningham. Shout out to him. He's really cool, really good player. Uh, we played the Mirror. Uh, in game three, he, went to go, he got to go first. His hand was like subpar, but... He had, like, Joker and then ended with, like, a monkey board and another scale. Oh, I also timed out due to inactivity. <laughs> but uh, he did the monkey board play because, like, he had to do it to search for cards with the guitar deal, And then he had a uh, one back row. And then I was able to activate the Pendulum Storm and then blow up his scales and then pop his set strike. And then I was able to, like, establish a board. And then after that, he had already used his Joker and a monkey board. And then he didn't have any cards in his hand. So he was able to come back from that. And then in top 16, uh, my opponent went first game three. He, like, pendulum summoned a sorcerer and then popped the scales and then had no back row. But then he gets a card, lizard draw, drew a card. And then he played the secret village of the spellcasters. So then uh, I was able to normal summon Joker. And his face just kind of, like, you know, he got a little upset because it was a spellcaster. But whatever. So I added a uh, guitar turtle because I already had monkey board in hand. And then uh, after I activated the pendulum storm, just drew his scales, just drew his, destroyed his village and just made a huge board. His jaw just kind of dropped. He knew it was over. <laughs> I noticed a lot of people were playing the Secret Village, but I can't understand that because I feel like the best matchups are obviously Monarchs and then all the... Yeah, I don't know why I started in against the Mirror, but... Oh, well. Against the Mirror, that seems super dangerous because I feel like you, you would just get set back if your opponent just has one of their, like, seven or eight spellcasters and you just... Yeah. <laughs> I'll just leave your 
Fuck you, you can have secret villain. You don't have spell cast. <laughs> I got rid of those. It seems kind of crazy. Oh, my Burning Abyss deck is up. Oh, man. Come on. Let's get down to push this deck. It's going so slow, man. I don't know what's the deal. Anyways, let's get back over to Clifton's deck. One of these days we'll get there. This deck list <laughs> is not actually my real deck list. It sucks, so don't look at that deck list. Back to Clifton's deck list, which doesn't suck for the top four to YCS. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, yeah, you cited the Twin Twisters, obviously. We were just about to go over that. You had you had the Kirins, Maxi, Kirin, Pendulum Storm, two Twin Twisters. There we go. And System Down, you you like that over, like, Cyber Dragon and stuff? Oh, yeah, System Down is phenomenal. You don't have to wait for your opponents to make a play. Um, like, it's really good against Demise. Like, 10 can, they, like, set their four back row, which is probably, like, Mojo, and then like a combination of two or three Call of the Haunteds, right. and then you you just don't even have to force out like them to make a play before you play the Cyber Dragon. You can just enter main phase one, slam system down. Your opponent usually cries a little bit, and then uh, then you kill them because their back row is not real. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to have real back row when every card just fights through it anyway. <laughs> yeah, you got double cast trap one here. That's obviously for monarchs. Maybe yeah, I just swapped out the strikes for monarchs. Um, I kind of I like Twin Twister. But sometimes I wish I had MSC because my deck's a combo deck. So I started into Twin Twister every time I went uh, second. It's so tough. There's not a lot of, like, that's a lot of people don't don't remember. While Twin Twister, yeah, you can definitely argue that card is limit worthy. It also yeah. has its moments where it kind of makes you make some really bad choices. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm playing Pendulums. I want to have as many cards as I possibly can. Right. But uh, it's really good against Anti-Spell if you're going second. Because as soon as they flip Anti-Spell Fragrance, I mean, sure, you can just MST it. But I'd rather just play Twin Twister and discard a card to pop an anti spell fragrance in another back row, because I'd rather just good, do that. Because like my hand's dead. <laughs> yeah, my hand's dead anyways if they have fragrance. So I'd rather just sacrifice an extra card to pop their fragrance in another card and try to get in there. Magic Deflector, just Monarch, right? I'm assuming. Yeah, that yeah that card was phenomenal. Card's broken. <laughs> like spell stun is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. But all right, man. Any uh, any shout outs? Any um. Any stories you want to tell about this? Uh, yeah, shout out to Team TCD through the decades, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, they do online sites. Go check them out and stuff. Shout out to Chester Hansen. He top aided the YCS. Um, he helped me with. We worked on this list for a long time. But yeah, I have some notable rounds. Uh, we got there to our hotel at like two or three a.m. I had about three hours of sleep, and then I woke back up to go to the event. It was awful, and uh, I had already built my deck and filled out a deck list with the Reflesia build. And then uh, I got there and completely, I don't know why, but I completely changed my deck to the traps and everything. I redid my deck list and everything. I don't know why, but something just told me to play this deck, and I'm glad it did. Yeah, whoever told you that was looking at no one told, Yeah, no one really told me. I was just kind of like, I just don't feel confident with the Reflecia bills. Oh, yeah, the other personality. Got you. I, I had only tested this build on DN. Like, I hadn't topped any regionals or nothing with it. I topped, like, three regionals with the Reflecia build, one, a PS4, and, like, two ARG states, and then some. something just told me to play this deck. I don't know why. That makes sense, though. So, uh, what was it that was? Chester was playing Burning Abyss, though, right? Yeah, he played PKBA. Yeah. Oh, PKBA. God damn it. Why are people playing Vanilla? Just kidding. <laughs> Fogblade's really good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, man. Well, I really appreciate your time. Um, we'll get this up there, and uh, everyone, uh, congratulations to Clifton. Top four. That's pretty, pretty hardcore stuff there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wish him good luck at Nats this year. He's a really good player. He's really he really earned it. It's, he's deserved it. It takes a lot of a lot of time and effort to get to this level. And uh, personally, I've witnessed Clifton work really hard, and I, so I'm proud of him personally. And uh, thanks for your time, man. Yeah, thank you. Have a good one.